Apartments church service here in Rockwood, Tennessee. We're trying a new way to set the camera up. We hope this will be a blessing to you. Pray for us. And uh, we hope this will help and strengthen you and exalt the Lord Jesus Christ. singing, going to sing some Christmas songs here, these ladies have, and brother has a song, I guess, suppose. I'll be the odd ball, I don't have a Christmas song. Oh, well, it don't have to be a Christmas song, it ain't Christmas yet, but, uh, you know, a lot of people are to get tangled up this time of year, they say, Jesus wasn't born on December 25th, well, we're not worshiping December 25th, it ain't about the day, it's about the person. That's what it's all about, the person. And uh, there's no word in the Bible that it teaches us to recognize the birth of Jesus. There's no word in the Bible that says recognize my birthday or anybody else's birthday. But we do that because we love Him, because we want to honor Him. We want to exalt Him just like you did with your children and we deal with ours. It's something we do to show affection. And it's about honor the Lord Jesus Christ. Now the world has made a lot of things that uh, they're not even biblical. They, they've tried to replace the Christmas story altogether with foolishness and fairy tales. And of course the businessmen have turned into a time of uh, uh, buying and selling. People are out tonight buying gifts for people they don't like. <laughs> things that them people won't use. <laughs> Uh, uh, my, and there's going to be a lot of people depressed because they can't buy for everybody. Who can? I mean, they can't give enough and then January hits and they're even more depressed because they can't pay for all that stuff they bought for them people they don't like and they won't use it and now they got to deal with it. It's pitiful. That's the shape that people get in. That's why I don't buy nothing for nobody. <laughs> no, I... Well, I hadn't, Judy does to buy it if I bought anything. And she'll be good. I'm going to get her something for Christmas this year if I have to go up to five or six dollars. <laughs> I mean, go all out, brother, go all out. But we're glad to be with y'all and we pray God will use this to strengthen you. And uh, if you have a prayer request, you put it on here and we'll, we may see it tonight, that <coughs> while the program is going on. Or we'll read it when we get home. But there's others that are watching 
And folks, we'll pray for you and your need if you'll put it on here. And if you're unsaved, our prayer tonight is that you would look to God in Jesus' name and be saved. You'd come to Him repenting of your sins, asking God to forsake you. And He said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He's in the saving business. Amen. Amen. We're going to pray and say another one, Sister Lori. <laughs> Is it warm enough in your room, buddy? Yeah. Is it too we'll warm there, buddy? Yeah, if it's too warm. Uh, anybody cold? Anybody? Daddy say some are cold and a few are frozen. The Bible says there's many cold and a few are chosen. Uh, it's warm enough to me. Okay, I don't think this thing is on right now. At all. Oh, it is too. Let me cut it down a hair. Well, let's see. I don't know how that works, but it just says 66, and surely it's warmer than 66 in here. I don't know. It is. It was on like 71, so I cut it down, but it's still running, so. It ain't that oh, I don't know. Yeah. I'll leave it alone. Let y'all take it. What are we saying, Mr. Lori? Page 66. Page 66. Hey, man, you got, that right that air you got that right off the air conditioner. <laughs> I did. That's your leadership right there. <laughs> Away in the manger. Away in the manger, I like that. <laughs> to people. Hey Amen. Who's the singing tonight? She's going ahead. All right. You go right ahead. I'll try to keep the video working. What child is this who lay to rest? Hey Amen. On Mary's lap is sleeping. Whom angels greet with anthem sweet while she the birds watch their keeping. This, this is Christ. 
trust the King whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary.
look to the heavens, you can look to the skies, you can find redemption staring back in your eyes. There is protection, there's peace the same, burning your ticket for that long black train, cause there's victory in the Lord I say, victory in the Lord. Amen. Cling to the Father and His holy name, and don't go riding on that long black train. There's an engineer on that long black train, making you wonder if your wife is worth the pain. He's just a way for you on your heart to say, let me ride on that long black train. But you know there's victory yeah, in victory. the Lord I say. In the Lord Jesus. Victory Amen. in the Lord. Cling to the Father and His holy name. And don't go riding on that long black train. Well, I can hear the whistle from a mile away. It sounds so good, but I must stay away. That train is a beauty, makes everybody stare. But its only destination is the middle of nowhere. But you know, there's victory in the yeah, Lord, victory in the I Lord. say. Victory Amen. in the Lord. Cling to the Father in His holy name. And don't go riding on that long black train. I say, cling to the Father and His holy yeah, name, and don't go riding on that long black train. Yes, watch out, brother, for that long black train. Yeah. That devil is the driver of that long black train. Amen. 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 I don't have a Christmas one, but... Oh, uh, yeah, I was going to say, uh, I have a, don't have a big Christmas song. I have an old, old one, though, that I thought they might like. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs>
177. Uh, if you could play that, then let's sing it as a congregation here. There it is. I don't know why I couldn't look at it up in the index. Uh, my, I like that thing. Thing being said about victory tonight. We have victory through Christ Jesus. The world looks upon us as a bunch of losers. This gave me no good yet. And we're on the winning side of the issue. And throughout eternity, we'll be in glory. And the Bible says, look out of there. We're going to shine as the stars in the sky. One day, as far as the folks that died and died rejecting the Lord Jesus, we're going to look good. They're going to be in an eternal fire. They're going to be able to see it. We're going to shine as the stars of the heavens. Amen. Let's sing this tonight.
It's never been a question because God has never lost. He never lost a battle. He never lost a war. He never lost a skirmish. He never lost an argument. Thank God, he never lost a soul. Did he? Amen. 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 Praise God. God does not lose. Hallelujah. I've always been on the losing side. When I was growing up, we would play ball sometimes, you know, out, out in the cow pasture, even at school. And, uh, you know, they would they would figure out who would start picking, and they'd start picking back and forth. And I was always left out. And somebody would say, will you take them? They pretty well figured that I'd mess them up. I'd be on the losing team. My, my. But uh, when I got saved, I got on the winning side of this issue through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Good thing we can look in your Bible in Matthew chapter 1 if you want to. With that down, there's games with us tonight. And you've got to see Sandy back with me. I got your name right. I get everybody's name <laughs> crossed up somewhere or another. Uh, my. My, my wife had beat me too much. She's messed up my mind. <laughs> Smile when you look at me like that. <laughs> well, we're glad to be with you. It is Christmas time. And uh, we should, as preachers, preach out of Matthew chapter 1 about the Lord Jesus coming really more than just at Christmas time because... Mm -hmm. That is the message that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. And this is the story. This is the truth. This is the fact of the matter of God giving His Son and what Christmas is really all about. And it's, as I said, they made it about a lot of things. They made it out of a lot of foolishness. They made it out of even these people that get drunk supposedly celebrating the birth of Christ. Suppose that Christmas party. There'd be a lot of evil things that happen that God's not the author of. And sad to say there's a lot of folks that call themselves Christians, God's people. They're involved as whole groups of things that are unbiblical. Of wrong, my mind, and very little of it has to do with anything that God would have us to do. But nevertheless, we have the Word of God, and because the whole world is wrong, that don't mean I have to be wrong. But we have the Word of God to set things in order. And here in Matthew chapter one, God has Matthew, the pen in his hand, writing and telling us about these things, and it gives the genealogy here. Uh, back in the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, we want to start in verse 18 because I can't say all those names. They're Jewish names. I don't know if a Jew can say them or not. But I know I can't say them. And uh, we have them here and I'm not going to begin to try to read them. But God gives 42 generations. 42. See, God don't work with coincidences. God, this is not an accident. This is not something that God just come up with one day and said, hey, you go to earth. Take on the body of a human being and die for the sins of the world. Let's see how that works out. <laughs> that is, that's God. He shows us in the Word of God that Christ was the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. God in the book of Genesis said in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's as far back as I need to go. And I don't know anybody old enough to have been there to know any different. And my dad would say, if God didn't create it, who did? For we know that with ever creation, there is a creator. I mean, if I come in here tonight and said, well, this is a nice little pulpit. I think they call it something else when it's out like this. But uh, you look at it, yeah, yeah, it's 
really, I mean, somebody, if you look at the cracks in the corners of the joints, somebody really knows what they've done. And I mean, by looking at its ability, it's a little wobbly because they broke a foot off of it. But uh, I said, you, you might say, well, who made that? And I said, nobody made it. It just happened to be. It's just a freak of nature. <laughs> a million, billion, trillion years ago, this wood and nails and glue that magically come together <laughs> and it formed this pulpit. <laughs> That's hard to believe now. They talk about being hard to believe the Bible. It's hard to believe that we can look at this whole world and say, it's all accident. It's all coincidence. There is no creator. He took millions and millions and trillions and trillions and millions of years. And this earth came from nothing, became something, and, and just naturally developed into what we have today. And that's hard to believe. Matter of fact, for me, that's impossible to believe. It takes a lot more faith, as they would call it, to believe that than to simply believe the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And here, Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, God has this written. Now, He's given the generations of uh, Jesus. I can't remember if this is the generations of Mary or of Joseph. And Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, verse 16. So He's given you the generations of Joseph, who was not Jesus Christ is real daddy. He was Mary's husband, but he was not Jesus' his father. But God gives you the generations of Joseph back through time to show you his hand in every bit of it. I believe it is in the book of Luke now that he gives you the generations of Mary to show how God brought this thing to pass through certain, not just anybody. And not just everybody, but God got a plan. Thank God. And he said in verse 18, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. He's going to tell us what we need to know. Sure, we know that he's not telling us moment by moment detail. But God in his all-knowing wisdom is telling us what we need to know. What we need to tell there's a lot of questions that could be asked, but God tells us all we need to know. And they can say, well, explain that. I heard a fellow say the other day, he said the virgin birth, he said that's an impossibility. Well, it is. But with God, all things, things are possible. possible. Yes, man. Yeah, with man, these things are impossible. It's a matter of you simply believe God or you don't believe God. And he said, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. Let's turn the page here. We have his mother Mary was in spouse. We would call that engaged. The only thing about it is engagement used to be serious. And it still is in the Jewish world, what I understand. And really in a lot of, the, a lot of other countries and nationalities. And they used to have a law, they call it breach of promise. If a man promote, proposed to a woman to marry her, and he broke that off, she could have him arrested. Wonder why they more arrest now than they <laughs> uh, But she was engaged to Joseph. That serious being. And in God's mind, in God's eye, and as it should be in ours, they are, they are in love. They want to be husband and wife and have children. But there's things going on that Job don't know. Mary knows a lot more than Job knows. But God in his own time is going to reveal what Job needs to know. And his mother Mary was his first in spouse to Joseph before they came together. Now here's the amazing thing about the Word of God. See, that's written to where anybody mature knows what God said. If they don't know what God said, they're, they're not mature enough to know what is going on. But God makes it plain. You can read it to the first graders. You can read it in a mixed audience. It's not 
It's not suggestive. It's not ugly. It's not off color. It's not going too far. But it's telling us what is going on. God's word is always honorable, decent. You hear people get ugly and off color and slowly speaking in behalf of God. You know God ain't got nothing to do with that. He says here, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. You know, I'm not a doctor, but I've seen women before and I said, that woman's showing. That woman's with child. It used to be obvious. And evidently, it had got to be obvious. Mary hadn't explained it to Job. She hadn't told him what she knows. I mean, it's hard to explain. It's a difficult situation that she's in. And he's in. And he said, with child of the Holy Ghost. Now see, God, God is not writing this or having it wrote to us as it happened. God knows what has happened. It's ordained to happen. It's planned to take place. And God can reveal truths that will only be known at the end of the story. God can reveal it from the very beginning. And God lets us know right off the bat, this is a work of God. Amen. And the Bible says, then Joseph, we say, I made man, by the way. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and this is good here, God gives us a little peek at Job. He says he's a just man. Now for God to say a person is just, is a whole lot. The word just, of course, has to do with justice and justified and justification. That means to be cleared of all charges. When God, when a person comes to Jesus and gets born again, gets saved, they're forgiven of all their sins. They're justified through the blood of Jesus Christ. That means before God, not before the courthouse, not before the community, but before God, a person is clear of all charges because it has been paid for. It's not condoned, overlooked, or pushed down the road. It's paid for through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, we know that the blood of bulls and goats <coughs> could never take away sin. The Old Testament, all the ceremonies and all the sacrifices never take away any sin. It was a picture. It was a foreshadow. It was an illustration of what God, as the Bible said, God had recorded that one day God would provide himself a sacrifice. He became the sacrifice for us himself. That's why John, when God had it recorded that John the Baptist standing on the riverbanks of Jordan said, Behold, look, see, the Lamb of God. Now if there's any Gentiles around there, they would have said, Lamp? I don't hear no, I don't hear no lamp. I've seen no lamps. Lamp of God. God didn't, the lamp is. The town Jews to this day, the lamb holds a very special place in their life. Well, they're heathens, and a lot of them are. I have friends that uh, pick at the Jews and find everything, you know, they can wrong and magnify. Uh, they say they are bad Jews, but there's a lot of bad ones. <laughs> There's a lot of bad rangers. I'm not one, of course. <laughs> but in our family, should we throw the whole family away? Should we kill the whole family? Because there's some that's not what they ought to be. No, no. Romans chapter 3 shows us how God, God keeps his word regardless of what a Jew's as a nation does, because he's made them a promise. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says, and Joseph, her husband, being a just man, he knows God. He's been clear. He's right with God and not willing to make her a public example. See, he had the right, <clears throat> he had the right in that day to take her before the government of that land, which was religion and the government to move. It worked together. The priest run the country. God was supposed to be the head of the nation. And he could he had the right to take her before the judges and say this woman is 
a child. We're engaged. She's been unfaithful to me. And they would stone her to death. They would put her to death. And the Bible says here that he's not willing to make her a public example. And was minded to put her away privately. See, uh, it used to be, and I'm sure there's some sense there is still some of it around, though not much, because there's nothing seemingly in America that brings shame anymore, that brings grief, that brings sorrow, that brings guilt, at least that it shows. But he's thinking about, he's not going to take the court to get out of this engagement, to show that he is innocent. See, there's one thing Joe does know about this situation. He knows this ain't my young. He knows that. And he said he's minded to put her away privately. He wanted to save her from the shame, from being seen, from being mocked, from being run down. I know, I know the uh, people uh, keeping up when folk get married. And when they have their first child, if it didn't take nine months, oh, they hit the ceiling. You know, they tell everybody. These things ain't right, and I, well, you're just as wrong. Ain't nothing but tell what business is it of theirs? That's between them and God. What business is it of this tail bear to count the days and count the months and count the, the, the time so they can expose this man or woman or boy or girl? What business is it of theirs? That's as ungodly as any other sin. I turn to me. Amen. He didn't want to put her away. He talked about putting her away privately so she'd never be embarrassed. So she wouldn't be hurt by the tail bear, the gossip. She wouldn't be put down and mocked. Why did he do all this? You got to remember, he loved her. <laughs> he loved her. He, hey, love, the Bible says real love, love. Try to get in my mind that verse says love works no evil. You love somebody, you don't hurt them. Uh, a good dear friend of mine uh, went off on me one time. And uh, his brother said, I can't believe that you didn't just bust his mouth for him. He said, I can't believe you let him talk to you like that. And you didn't hurt him. And I said, son, I love him. Yeah, it hurt, but I love him. I didn't want to hurt him. I could have hurt him, but I love him. I want to help him. Good, a good busting him out. I to help him. But I didn't feel that way. It was pitiful that a man be in this kind of shape. Love works no evil. He loved her. See, he had got engaged to her. That's, that's because he loved her. He wanted her to be his wife, not just his girlfriend, not just his woman, but his wife. There's great significance to that. I'll tell you this is a little funny. Well, I'll rest a minute. I was up in Oak Creek, and a headlight on my old car went out. And I stopped up there at a park store and was parked out in the parking lot. I went on my headlight and I was out there putting that headlight in the car. And I heard this woman say, where you been, man? And I looked and she was standing, you know, here. And I heard the man say, shut up, woman. And I looked there and she said, I'm not your woman, I'm your wife. Well, this is not good. He said, go on, woman. And she said, I ain't going on, and you can't make me. I've got something in the car for you. I said, oh, God, I'm not in this place. Gunfire, you're here. Good night. I got in that car. We moved. I was in the line of fire. Uh, but she said, I'm not your woman. I'm your wife. There's an honor to that. That's a special position and this generation has been 
cheated out of it. They've been talked out of it. Half the people living together in America now have never been married. They don't even think about marriage anymore. It's sad. They don't realize. I tried to tell a young woman just the other day. She said, I'm his wife. I said, you never got married. Well, we had our own little ceremony. <laughs> yeah. Well, that ain't worth a dime. You know what I mean? Uh, it's all about saying to the public, this ain't just my girlfriend. This just ain't my woman. This is my wife. Making it public, going through legal ceremonies that the world might know, leave her alone. She's not up for grounds now. She's my wife. Make it public so everybody could know that all these beautiful women would leave me alone in front of you. We had ceremonies. That both been funny. <laughs> but uh, anyway, he loved her. He loved her. He didn't want to hurt her. He didn't want her embarrassed. He didn't understand. So you got to remember, Joe to this point, he don't understand. It's hard for him to deal with. My, 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 if he talked to her and he said, you know, you're sure. And she said, well, I'm a child. If this happened. Him and her had a conversation. And I'd say they did talk to him. And she said, yes, and I'm a child of the Holy Ghost. No doubt Joe said, where's the Holy Ghost live? So I go, whoopee. <laughs> you know, I've seen these things where, you know, women fight. They find out this woman's been seeing her husband. And instead of whipping him, they fight one another. And men... I mean, they find out a man sending her wife, girlfriend, and woman, and they're going to kill him. She's the problem, not him. I mean, things get all mixed up. But no doubt when she said, if that conversation took place, she said, I'm a child of the Holy Ghost. No doubt Joe thought, where did he live? I'll kill him. I never heard nobody in that name, but uh, I'm not putting but that's the natural reaction. Can you imagine the torment in his mind and the grief? But above all things, above all things, he knew he loved her. He knew he loved her. And the Bible goes on to say, then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, look, listen, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. God is going to help Job right here. God knows when to show us what we need to know. Thank God he knows the right time. We wonder a lot of things about things that happen in life. Why, God, why? And we can't get no answers sometimes, seemingly. But eventually God shows us what was going on. Amen. For us here and, and tonight, these things we won't understand till we get to heaven. We couldn't handle the answers. The questions torment us to death, and we have to say, I've committed my life to God. I'm trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. I know that all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to His purpose. And it has to stop right there. Say, God makes no mistakes. I know he loves me. I know he's not failing. He's not doing me wrong. And he certainly understands my situation. And he cares. And it'll work out all right when all is said and done. But here God is sending Job some help. And the angel appeared unto the Lord unto Joseph in a dream. And he said, Joseph, thou son of David, Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. That's still hard to believe. See, this has never happened before. It's never gonna happen again. This is unusual. This is unbelievable. But Job knows the Lord. And he believes you. And we'll see that. And she shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. What does that mean? For he 
shall save his people from their sin. Savior is what that means. Savior. And notice he says, shall save his people from their sins. Not in their sins, not with their sins, but from their sins. This religious world now teaches and promotes, if not openly, they do it secretly, that nothing is wrong with nothing. But that's not what the Bible shows us. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which is spoken of the Lord by the prophet. And this is Isaiah 7, 14. Behold, look, listen, pay attention. Behold, a virgin shall be with child. That's impossible. If you were a child, you're not a virgin anymore. But see, God is working out something that's never happened before and never will happen again. And she shall bring forth a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. See, the best book on the Bible is the Bible. He said, I just can't understand it, but just keep reading. And God will explain. The Holy Ghost, the Bible says, shall guide you in all truths. Keep reading, because the Bible is the best book on the Bible. God is not written, but have the Bible written to confuse us. And it's not that the Bible is written to we can't understand it. But the matter of fact, God has to explain it spiritually because it's a spiritual book that tells about him. But God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And God has given us a written picture, illustration of who he is that we can understand it as we're able. The Holy Ghost gives us what we need to know. And he says, his name shall be called Emmanuel which being interpreted is God with us. A lot of people get off right here. A lot of people claim to be Christians and they stop right here. God. God. God with us. They hold cults. They call themselves Christians. And Christians, they call them Christian denomination that deny this verse right here. That's one reason they rewrite these scholars, so-called. Keep rewriting the Bible because they do not believe Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. They will not have that. And here it is, plain. This is God with us. Amen. We have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Amen. Ghost. That day that John the Baptist baptized the Lord Jesus, we have God the Father in heaven said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. We have the Holy Spirit descending in the form of a dove. There's Jesus in the water being baptized. There's the Holy Spirit in there. And there's a voice from heaven. God the Father. It's just like God tells us about us. We're trinities. Your body, soul, and spirit. We're made in the image of God. See, the Bible explains all this if we believe it. If we simply believe it, we're going to understand it. Men, what they can't explain, they tend to disregard and reject. I had a fellow one time, he said, explain to me the Trinity. I said, well, before we go that far, you explain to me God. If you can explain God, I believe I can explain the Trinity. God, who always has been, and always will be. Who measures the waters of the earth from the palm of his hand, he declared. There's the Atlantic Ocean, there's the Pacific Ocean, the Mediterranean Sea, the Japan, Sea of Japan. I mean, Lake Erie. God, the Bible declared, measured the waters. He said he weighed the dust of the earth. He placed the stars. You know, they say there's only about 300,000 words in it, in every all the languages of the world. Altogether, there's only about 300 some thousand words. Well, we know that there's millions of stars. And God said he named every one of them. I mean, that ties my little mind up, God. Who the Bible declares knows the thought and the intent of your heart. 
as some of you know, I was preaching jail and prison uh, most of my ministry. And I've asked me a different time. How would you like to go to court and the judge know the faults and the intents of your heart? He knows every word you ever said, every place you ever been, every deed you ever did. I've had men say, I'm glad I've never got out of jail. Well, that's what this Bible, what God has written for us to know about him. He knows the thoughts and the intents of our heart. What does he know about me and you? Said the very hair of our head are numbered. You're doing a lot of subtracting in some cases. <laughs> no, that's that bother me, but <laughs> some people are losing their hair. Uh, but I said to that man, now if you can explain God, first off, to me, maybe we can explain the Trinity. And he hugged <laughs> All you know about God is what His Word tells you. They cut us off. They probably didn't tell us it's time to quit. But it is time to quit. But let's get these last two verses here. Now, are you bored to death, anybody? Having trouble with us? Ah, verse 24. Then Joseph, being raised from his sleep, did. See, Joe is obeying what God has sent him. He don't understand it. He's not a biologist. And biology can't explain it. But this is what God showed him. God told him. God sent him word. He didn't draw him a picture or give him a movie, but he gave him his word. And Job, as a child of God, got that in his mind to obey. So he did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took him his wife. And again, God makes it. He says this twice to make it clear, to make it plain. One thing God says, if God says it, that settles it. For anybody who believes it, it can explain it or understand it. But God says this twice in these few verses. And knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son. Again, anybody of any maturity understands what God's saying. If they don't, they ain't mature enough to know. Give them time. And he called his name Jesus. We see here that Joseph heard the word of God that God sent him. He believed it. He obeyed it. And he did what God said to do. Bless his memory. That's a child of God. And we have the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Call his name Jesus, the Savior. For he shall save his people from their sins. We have a Savior. I heard a, a mother, I know very little about it, but I heard one testify to the Savior. His testimony was he got saved. He believed God and believed Jesus, and he got saved. And he said, the problem I had with you from was we have no Savior. Muhammad's not a Savior. He didn't claim to be a Savior. He certainly wasn't a Savior. He was claimed to be a prophet of God, which was a lie. But he said, we had no Savior. It was all left up to us to follow the rules and the commands of that book and maybe we can make it. He said the only way that a, a, a Muslim can have absolute guarantee of heaven is to kill a Jew. Now, that's what he said. I don't know. He said to kill a Jew guaranteed you heaven or die trying. If you were killed, that's why they can put them best on and put best of dynamite on their children with remote control and send them to certain places and blow their own children and put them in heaven. Now that, you see, now, they, they believe that evidently. I mean, my, talk about, but see, it's satanic. It has a spirit. It has a, it has a, has a leadership. It has a feeling. But we know that's a devil. Yes. My, we know. No doubt about it. But see, 
What makes Christianity different? I'm not talking about denominations. I'm talking about Christianity. The Bible Christianity is we have a Savior. There's one who died for us. God came to earth and took upon himself the body of a man and walked this earth 33 and third year. And he lived a perfect life, a sinless life. And he suffered, bled, and died and resurrected again from the dead on the third and appointed day. He was the Lamb of God that atoned, paid for the sins of the world. That who shall will? Who shall will? Who shall will? You know, if they come to me and say, uh, Men, you have two girls. One of them is, How old are they? 46, 47. 46, 47. I can't keep up with it. They change every year. <laughs> yeah. And you know, they think they're grown up now, but in my mind, they never grow up. No, I was your baby. Yeah, I was your baby. Yeah, I was your baby. I was. If they come to me and said, Mr. Ramey, if you won't let us kill one of your daughters, we're going to kill everybody in our own county. You know what I'm saying? Better Go tell ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Better tell our own county to get ready to eat God, because I'm not sacrificing one of my daughters. <laughs> Well, we'll up the ante. We'll up it. We'll kill everybody in Tennessee. There's over four million people in Tennessee. I'd say Tennessee better get ready to be That's wrong. Because right. I'm not. My love is greater for my children. And that's what it is natural. That's why you can tell we're in an unnatural day. Because parents love. Even animals have a love for their offspring enough to die in their place. But God. Had so great a love for us, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. He gave Him to die. He didn't give Him to come here and be king, be wealthy, and live an extravagant life. No, He came here born of a virgin to be mocked and no doubt called an illegitimate child. Born in a barn, laid in a manger, the king of glory. But God so loved us. He's telling us here what Christmas is all about. It's all about us being saved. Amen. It's the gift of God. Salvation is the gift of God. It's all about people being saved. Forgiven of their sin. One boy in jail asked me, he said, people, he said, preacher, he said, why did God let me live? He said, I don't know why I exist. He said, I, I'm running out of Reason why I ain't even leave? Why did God let me leave? I said, well, because he loved me. Why would he love me? I said, that's because he's gone. He said, well, why should he let me live? I said, because he wants you to be his. He's not going to force you. Religions down through the centuries have forced people to join certain groups. God don't accept that. There's no such thing as you force them into Christianity. God don't accept that. No. My, but I said, God, let you live because he loves you. And he wants you to know him. He wants you to worship him. He wants you to live for him. He wants to fellowship with you. That's God's heart. His priority is that people be saved. That's why we can tell anybody that we can get to talk to. They be saved. You know, Jesus died for you. Yes. It's not about St. Paul, it's about Jesus. The gift of God, his desire to save and forgive your sins. Because men are sinners, women are sinners. Romans chapter 5. Father, we thank you for the word of God tonight. Thank you for the gift that you've given. Thank you for the love we received. Thank you for the blessing of being here tonight. And before that we can meet you back again here next week. We may be in your very presence and have wonders that will be for eternity. Look upon the face of you who saved us by your grace. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Comfort us in these last days. Help us to be a light in a dark world. Help us to be a strength and strength to a brother or sister. Help us to give you glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Any question before we go tonight? Any question about anything I said?
Anything about the scriptures I might be able to help you with? Evidently, I told you all you need to know. It. I, I asked the boy James Terrell General one time, I said, anybody in here got a, I don't like to tell this fool, come on here with it. I said, anybody in here got a question about the Bible, about being saved, about God, I might be able to help you with? This boy sat in the floor with a bunch of them, he said, what about them creatures? What about that Leviathan in the book of Job? What is that? I said, that's a good question, son. Anybody else got a question in here? <laughs> he said, that's the best thing that I've got yet. <laughs> I've been told there's whales and there's alligators and there's fish. I said, son, what difference does it make? What does that got to do with you being here in jail in Fitzgerald County needing to be saved? He said, not a thing. I said, that's what they were talking about. Well, we appreciate y'all you two being here tonight. Thank you for being with us and praying with us. Pray God to help us to reach these people down here in this place. And we uh, pray that God has used this to be a help to you. And if you're unsaved, hey, Brad Barton, Sister Anderson, June Ramey, good to see you. Hey, man, Rodney, oh, I'm Randy Scarborough, my, my. Uh, thank you for joining. Pray for us each Sunday night as we come down here to God will help us to be alive. Give us favor with these people, 130 people, some odd in this uh, apartment complex. And uh, we want to see and reach every one of them for the glory of God. Thank you for joining in with us. Good night and God bless you.